In this video, I'm going to show you how to cast on stitches. For this demonstration, I'm using size 9 double pointed needles just because they're short needles and it's easier for me um, to demonstrate on them, but you would use whatever needles you would require for your project. And this is just regular acrylic yarn that I'm using here for this demonstration. The first technique is called the backwards loop technique. You want to start off by leaving about a four to six inch tail and tie a slip knot. So just like that, pull it through, and there's your slip knot. Insert your needle, tighten around this slip knot. Don't have to go really tight, just leave a little bit of room right there. Now for the backwards loop cast on, you're going to use your working yarn. And by working yarn, I mean the yarn that is connected to your skein. So you're going to use the working yarn and make a loop like so with your thumb, insert the needle and pull. Repeat, insert and pull. And you're just making a loop using your thumb and you're inserting your needle to kind of pick up that loop and pulling it through. It's a really easy way to cast on stitches fast. Um, one thing, sort of a con for these stitches, is that they don't give you a very pretty edge um, at the end. It's kind of sim a simple edge, and um, they're not as sturdy. As in when you start knitting, it may be easy um, if, if you drop a stitch then it's kind of harder to pick it up. So it's an easy cast on um, to try on as your first cast on, but um, know that there are a couple disadvantages to this cast on. The advantage is that it's really fast. Now the next cast on is called the knitted cast on. And for the knitted cast on, you will need both your knitting needles. And again, you start with a slip knot, leaving a four to six inch tail. And now you're gonna keep this non-working tail or non-working yarn, the tail part sort of away. I usually just tend to hold it like this and use your needle, your second needle, insert it through this front loop, not the back loop, but the front loop of the needle like so. Okay. And then take your working yarn, wrap it around, guide it with this index finger of your left hand, to kind of bring it out from under there, pull, twist, and put it onto your needle. And then pull the working yarn to tighten it. Let's do it again. Insert through the front loop, twist around that needle, guide it through, twist, and put it on. We'll do a few more. Insert wrap around, guide it through, pull out, and put it onto the needle. It's really simple to do once you get the hang of it and you practice a little bit. And this is where you can adjust the tension um, to make sure as you're pulling through, you don't want to pull through too tight to make these really tight especially for patterns that will tell you to cast on stitches loosely. This is where you can control how much you pull on the stitch and how loosely you cast the stitch. Now the disadvantages to this, um, to this type of casting on method is that yes, it is a little bit more involved. You're using both needles and it might take a little, a slight bit longer than the, the, the backwards loop method, but the stitches are sturdier. You do get a very nice edge on the stitches compared to the backwards loop as you can see right here and when you drop a stitch it's not it's it's a little bit more easier to pick up than than the backwards loop method so those are the two um, common cast on methods um, and I shouldn't say common because some people may use different methods and there is another very popular method called long tail cast on which I have demonstrated in a different video um, and I've provided a link here so Whichever cast on method suits you, um, go with that. Some might suit well for one pattern and some might suit well for another pattern. So um, pick the one you like and just go with it. Happy knitting.